Hey, it's Alan, and I just wanted to let you know that you can now listen to the ongoing history of new music early and ad-free on Amazon Music, included with Prime. Here are some things I learned this year. None of this knowledge is going to change my life, or yours, but it is fun to have this filed away somewhere. For example, the Donald Trump wax figure at Madame Toussaint's has its hair made from a blend of both human and yak hair. The eyebrows are made from squirrel fur. The average American bra size is 34D. There's vodka from the exclusion zone around the Chernobyl reactor in Ukraine. There's only one bottle in existence, and the distillers say, no, 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 it's no more radioactive than any other vodka, which I guess is good to know. Out of the UK, we hear this. Britain spend nearly four months of their lives waiting for the kettle to boil. A small inconvenience for a good cup of tea, I guess. And 2019 was the year one of the great controversies of the ages was settled for all time. An examination for the original patent for modern toilet paper. This is from 1891, filed by Seth Wheeler, the inventor of perforated toilet paper, illustrates that the roll should be hung on the dispenser so that things roll over not under. Please, save your emails. That that debate has been settled. The science is in. It's over. Move on. Meanwhile, I also have a long list of music-related facts that came to my attention over the past 12 months. Many of them were incorporated into various ongoing history programs over the last year. But then there's all this orphan stuff, material that's interesting and fascinating, but didn't make it into any program for whatever reason. Maybe they just didn't fit into any of this year's topics. Maybe this stuff was just too off-brand. Maybe these facts were just too out there. Couldn't find a spot for them. But I am determined that this research will not go to waste. I have distilled this information into a tight list of 60, so I may present them to you. This is the fifth annual edition of 60 Mind-Blowing Facts in 60 Minutes. This is the Ongoing History of New Music podcast with Alan Cross. That's some early Green Day, the spring of 1990 to be exact with a cover of a song by fellow Bay Area punks Operation Ivy. That's called Knowledge. And I think that's an appropriate start to a program that's overflowing with knowledge and trivia and information. It's just that not all of this stuff is useful. Maybe maybe none of it. But it is fun. Hello again, I'm Ellen Cross, and this is the fifth annual edition of a program I call 60 Mind-Blowing Facts About Music in 60 Minutes. Like I said, this is material uncovered during the last 12 months of researching this program, and it's material that really didn't have anywhere to go. These facts just languished as sticky notes on my desk. But rather than toss all these nuggets aside, I save them for this year-end program, a show where I gather all these stickies, put them in a pile, and basically read them off to you at random. You got it? So let's begin, and we'll start with a couple of Beatles facts. Random fact number one. In 2004, there was a tree planted in Griffith Park in Los Angeles and dedicated to the memory of George Harrison. He was big into gardening, so this seemed like the right thing to do when he died. After growing to more than 10 feet tall, this tree was attacked by an insect, which killed it. What kind of insect? A species of tree beetle. Therefore, a beetle tree was killed by a tree beetle. Number two. And this balances out the bad news about George's tree. His song, Here Comes the Sun, from the Abbey Road album, is the most streamed of all Beatles songs. The most downloaded track is Let It Be, which is a Paul McCartney composition. Three, a man from England thought he'd scored the bargain of a lifetime when he found tickets to a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert in Belfast for just 30 pounds. He bought tickets, secured airfare, got a hotel. But when he arrived, he realized that the name of the group was the Red Hot Chili Pipers, which is a rock band featuring bagpipers. Four, the guy who voiced Tony the Tiger, you know, the Frosted Flakes character, is also the same person who sang throughout the holiday classic How the Grinch Stole Christmas. 
Five, there are many statues honoring rock stars around the world. Phil Linnett in Dublin, Bon Scott in Fremantle, Australia, Frank Zappa in Vilnius, Lithuania, The Beatles in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, Amy Winehouse in Camden Market, London. Well, Nick Cave is getting his own in his hometown of Warakanabil, Australia. He's naked, but for a loincloth, and he's riding a horse. Don't know why. Item six. People typically touch their phones 2,117 times a day. And as a bonus fact, just so you know, cell phones carry about 10 times the bacteria of most toilet seats. And seven, Steve Albini, the producer ranging from albums ranging from Nirvana to the Pixies to Veruca Salt to the Breeders, is a champion poker player. He was taught to play when he was just a kid by his great-grandmother. And earlier this year, he beat 30 other players to win his first World Series of Poker title, taking a part of $106,000 in a seven-card stud tournament in Las Vegas. This gives us an excuse to play some Steve Albini produced music like this. Moving on with more of these 60 mind-blowing music facts in 60 minutes. We are up to number eight. A standard 12-inch, 33 and a third RPM vinyl album features a spiral groove that runs about 427 meters to store about 20 minutes worth of music. As the record plays, the stylus vibrates a thousand times a second. This subjects the stylus to a force of 90 Gs. If that stylus were an airplane, that sort of force would catapult the plane to the speed of Mach 2.6 in one second. So, respect to the stylus. Nine, the next time you have a headache, remember that listening to Mozart increases the effectiveness of ibuprofen. Music paired with ibuprofen can also cut inflammation by up to 93%. Item 10, Robert Smith of The Cure has a habit of responding to email in all caps. Don't be offended. He's not yelling at you. That's just how he does things. And he only reads and responds to emails on Thursdays. 11. John Bechtel is Ministry's touring keyboard player. He's also played with Fear Factory, Killing Joke, and Prong. His sister is Alice Bechtel, a cartoonist that made the graphic novel Funhouse, which got turned into a Broadway musical. John is actually a character in both, but Alice is best known for creating the Bechtel Test, which is the test that measures the representation of women in fiction. All right, you see what I mean about obscure and weird music trivia, right? Item 12. It's long been said that REM found their name by flipping through a dictionary at random. But according to a 2019 biography, REM was actually taken from the initials for Robert Eugene Meatyard, an obscure photographer from Kentucky who signed his prints as REM. Apparently, Michael Stipe was a fan. 13. The mother of Tom Morello, guitarist for Rage Against the Machine, Audio Slave, and Prophets of Rage, was the homeroom teacher of Adam Jones, guitarist with Tool. Number 14, Dave Navarro of Jane's Addiction once wrote a love letter to singer Fiona Apple in his own blood. And 15, Keith Flint, the scary-looking dancer and singer with The Prodigy, took his own life on March 4th, 2019. But when he died, he owned a pub down the road, a place called The Leather Bottle. But he was also loaded with debt. So after his death, his possessions were auctioned off to pay everybody what they were owed. And among the items that were sold was a stuffed rabbit wearing a backpack and carrying a shotgun. I have no idea how much that went for, but I can tell you that the whole lot, everything that was up for sale, netted 350,000 pounds. Picking up with our 60 facts in 60 minutes, we have item number 16, and this is back to vinyl for just a second. It takes between 100 and 150 tons of pressure to squeeze a lump of raw vinyl into a playable record. 17. According to a survey of 7,500 music fans by Paris-based streaming music service Deezer, it's necessary to listen to at least 78 minutes of music a day to ensure proper mental and physical well-being. Number 18, 
When Queen singer Freddie Mercury was suffering from the late stages of AIDS, he lost most of one of his feet to complications from the disease. 19. Somebody managed to recover a cigarette butt left behind somewhere by Rihanna. It was put up for sale on eBay with the caption, Her lips touched it. Initial asking price? $500. I have no idea if anybody bought it. And number 20. Over the course of their career, the Tragically Hip actually played more shows in America than they did in Canada. 561 U.S. gigs to 549 Canadian shows. can't get over that. The hip played more shows in America over their career than they did in Canada. Not by much, but still. I gotta dig deeper into that. We are one third the way through this list of 60 mind-blowing music facts in 60 minutes, and we will pick things up with item number 21 next. This is the annual clear-out known as 60 mind-blowing musical facts in 60 minutes. We are up to item number 21. If you suffer from road rage, scientists in Brazil have determined that you need to listen to instrumental versions of songs by Adele. This is important to know because if you're ever in Brazil, nearly 50,000 people die on the road in that country every year. The study determined that piano versions of Someone Like You and Hello work best. Fact number 22, Ed Sheeran's manager, his manager, made 30 million pounds this year. Considering that managers take a 15 to 20% cut of a client's earnings, that'll give you some idea of how much Sheeran made. 23. Up until recently, when hipsters started buying cassettes again, the biggest clients for blank cassettes were police forces who used them for suspect interviews. Number 24. The song Baby Shark has so far made its owners over $100 million. It's owned by a company called Smart Study out of South Korea and its education division, Pinkfong. A guy by the name of Kim Min Seok is a co-founder and beneficiary of all that wealth. Number 25, Lenny Kravitz isn't the only artist to get into designing condos for the Toronto market. Farrell Williams is doing that too. He's working on two residential towers in Toronto. Moving on to number 26, Andrew Lug Oldham, the very first manager the Rolling Stones ever had, is now teaching a university course in Kamloops. And here's item 27, Julian Casablanca's of The Strokes is something of an expert on the dangers of fascism. He even spoke on the subject at McMaster University in Hamilton this past year. Who knew that was a thing for him? Let's continue with more mind-blowing music facts. Number 28. Crazy Town, the rap rock group, barely escaped serious injury when their tour van crashed into a moose near Sudbury on Halloween night. The van was totaled. So was the moose. Neither survived. Item number 29. Madonna apparently drinks her own urine. After a performance, she takes an ice bath to help with stiff muscles, bruises, and any injuries. She also says that, and this is a quote, it's really good to drink urine after you've got out of the frozen bath. Again, I do not make this stuff up. This is the result of solid research. Item 30. Here's a prime example of something I found fascinating, but I just couldn't find a place to use it. The white bellbird, this is a, an actual bird, has a very, very loud song. This year, scientists finally succeeded in measuring exactly how loud this bird could sing. The answer is 125 decibels. To put that into perspective, 125 dB is louder than the PA at most rock concerts. It's also the equivalent of standing near a jet engine. And it's also the threshold where physical pain begins. This is one loud bird. Moving on to number 31. The Chinese government does not like hip-hop. They consider it to be subversive, disruptive, and anti-authoritarian. TV stations in China have been ordered never ever to show celebrities with tattoos as well as other elements of, and again, this is a quote, hip-hop culture, subculture, and immoral culture. 
In 2019, this ban extended to men's earlobes. If a male performer appears on TV wearing an earring, well, that's bad hip-hop stuff, so the broadcaster is required by law to blur out that part of the performer's head. 32. The strangest box set of all time was released in 2019. In 1952, composer John Cage debuted a piece called 4 Minutes and 33 Seconds, which consists of 4 minutes and 33 seconds of silence. When performed live, the musicians just sit at their instruments and play nothing. The purpose is for the audience to listen to the sound of the environment. Call it an exercise in mindfulness. Many musicians have covered 4 minutes and 33 seconds, and in 2019, Mute Records compiled a bunch of them in a box set featuring Depeche Mode, New Order, Moby, Erasure, Afghan Wigs, and several dozen more. So let's just think about that for a second. More than 50 artists playing nothing. Number 33, the KLF, one of the most subversive experimental bands in the history of British music. Uh, remember that this is a band that burned a million pounds in cash in public came up with the idea of building a pyramid made of the remains of 34,592 dead people. Construction on this pyramid began on November 23rd, 2018 in the Liverpool area. And if you want to um, participate, you can reserve your spot on the pyramid for just 99 pounds. Wonder if they'll burn that. Item 34, this deals with luggage. There was once a certain story about Weezer's Rivers Cuomo and how he made it past fans to the stage at certain gigs. He'd exit the tour bus, climb into some kind of wheelie bin, maybe a road case, and then be pushed undetected by roadies to wherever he needed to be, out of sight of fans. Well, that's nothing. Apparently, Taylor Swift travels in a suitcase. Not with, in. Back in the summer of 2017, a paparazzi snapped a picture of two men carefully carrying a large and bulky suitcase out of her apartment in New York. A website captioned it this way, Taylor Swift being transported in a huge suitcase from her Tribeca apartment into her truck in the trunk. Almost a dozen of Taylor Swift's security guards were present to move this package carefully as Taylor Swift remains to be unseen for a long time. And item 35 involves hobbies of rock stars. Damon Albarn of Blur is a killer at ping pong, Rivers Cuomo likes to knit. Guy Berryman of Coldplay is a collector of expensive cars and likes to race. Stephen Morris of New Order has a collection of vintage military vehicles. He has a tank. Dexter of The Offspring is a certified pilot. He once had his own Soviet MiG, still might. And Jack White? Jack likes to relax by doing taxidermy. Jack White, taxidermist aficionado. Moving on, item 36. The internet features all kinds of strangely formatted radio stations. There's one called Woof Drive, all dog radio. It features songs, parodies, poetry, and stories, plus all sorts of recordings of barking and howling. Apparently dogs love it. Still with dogs, and this is number 37 on our list, science has confirmed that the best music you can play for your dog is reggae, and the best reggae is are tunes that approximately match a dog's resting heartbeat. And if you don't have any Bob Marley, which works the best, soft rock is also quite soothing for them. 38. Sharks, on the other hand, seem to really like jazz. Macquarie University in Australia conducted some tests where sharks were rewarded with food. This was augmented by underwater speakers playing a variety of music. Turns out the sharks responded best to the food when they were played jazz, specifically the Mingus Big Band playing Haitian Fight Song. Item number 39. This has to do with strange tribute bands. Koi Division plays Joy Division songs while wearing fish masks. The Ramones are some middle-aged women from Philadelphia that play nothing but songs by the Ramones. Mini Kiss features three little people, they're all under four feet, and a 300-pound female singer. And here's my favorite, Mac Sabbath. They play nothing but Black Sabbath covers while dressed up as various characters from the McDonald's universe. Ronald McDonald, Mary McCheese, Grimace, The Hamburglar. And they get some pretty prestigious gigs, too, some festivals. And item number 40, 
Music merch is a $3 billion a year business. Most of it involves t-shirts, posters, programs, and the like. But Queens of the Stone Age issued official Queens of the Stone Age butcher paper. You know the brown stuff you wrap meat and fish in? The band created rolls of the stuff and distributed them to independent butchers from L.A. to Seattle to London. Why? No one knows. We are now two-thirds the way through our journey of 60 mind-blowing music facts in 60 minutes. The final 20 are coming up next. Don't go anywhere. This is an audio version of my annual office cleanup. I call this 60 mind-blowing music facts in 60 minutes. This is nothing but a collection of random facts that I discovered over the past year but had nowhere to use them. So I saved them up for this one big annual data dump. And we are now up to item number 41. U2 is the highest grossing touring act of the 2010s. They brought in 1.04 billion US dollars on the road in the last 10 years. Number two on the list is the Rolling Stones. No big surprise there, 929 million. And at number three, Ed Sheeran, 922 million. Item 42, there was a survey by a secondary ticket seller in the UK. It asked music fans about their sexual performance and preferences. Blues fans apparently last the longest in bed with an average time of 16 minutes. And 17% of all music fans admit to leaving in their Apple AirPods while doing it. Number 43, and this goes back to box sets and reissues. Massive Attack put out an edition of their legendary Mezzanine album. It came in a can of spray paint containing audio that was encoded in DNA. I dare you, try and play that one. Number 44, Keith Richards hasn't had a drink in over a year, allegedly. He says he just got fed up with it. Number 45, legendary singer Billie Holiday used to babysit actor Billy Crystal. And that's because Holiday recorded for Commodore Records, which was co-owned by Crystal's father. Again, don't know what you can do with that, but there you go. Item 46, the last thing you want to do in a karaoke bar in the Philippines is sing My Way, the Frank Sinatra song. Between 2002 and 2012, at least a dozen people were shot dead while singing that song. I don't know if things have improved since, but I wouldn't chance it. And item 47 of 60, if you ever find yourself in need of a plumber while at a Cage the Elephant show, talk to singer Matt Schultz. He used to work in construction. Plumbing was his specialty. We're now up to mind-blowing music fact 48 of 60. When Celine Dion released a line of gender-neutral children's clothing, she was attacked on two fronts. First of all, conspiracy-minded people started spreading stories that the designs on the clothes showed that she was definitely in league with the Illuminati. Second, an exorcist opined that she was in league with Satan because anything involving gender-neutral attributes was against the will of God. Item 49. Martin Hanford, creator of the Where's Waldo books, began his professional life as an illustrator of album artwork. If you want to see an example of his pre-Waldo work, track down an album called Magnets by the Vapors. See if you can find the hidden assassin on the front cover. Number 50. Musicians have the shortest lifespan of anyone in the general population. This is the conclusion of a University of Sydney professor who studied the death of musicians between 1950 and 2014. He compared those deaths to the general population and discovered that the average lifespan of a musician is 25 years shorter. 51. Some members of the British Navy were able to ward off some Somali pirates along the east coast of Africa by blasting them with songs by Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again, and Baby One More Time seemed to do the trick. 52. Eminem is a member of the Illuminati, or rather his replacement is... There's a conspiracy theory that's been circulating since the days of AOL chat rooms in 2000 that Eminem actually died in a car accident on December 15th, 2000. 
what we see today is a clone that was created by the super scientists of the Illuminati. Item number 53. Moby worked his way into the strangeness that is the Trump administration. He would like us to know that he's very well connected. As far back as 2017, he claimed that the so-called P-tape referenced in the Steele dossier is 100% real. This year, he connected the son of a dead Deutsche Bank executive with documents pertaining to Donald Trump's finances to Adam Schiff, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Those documents were subpoenaed as part of the impeachment inquiry. 54. A man from Manchester was threatened with jail time after he wouldn't stop playing Underworld's Born Slippy on repeat at 3 in the morning. Each time the cops were called, they would remove all his speakers, amps, and other electronics from the house. But he replaced them every single time. Last I heard, he was ordered to pay a fine of 1,500 pounds. And item number 55, you can buy Green Day coffee. Billy Joe Armstrong and Mike Dirt have a company called Oakland Coffee Works. Organic beans, of course. And it's the first company to use mass-produced bags and pods that are completely compostable. We're now in the final, final stretch of our 60 mind-blowing music facts in 60 minutes. And here we go with number 56. One of the strangest concerts of the last year was when three members of KISS, in full makeup, played a gig for eight people aboard a fishing boat off the coast of Australia. The plan was to use the low-frequency sounds of rock and roll to attract sharks to a place where people on a glass-bottom boat could watch them. Unfortunately, no sharks turned up. 57. Hordes of fans poured out of a Janet Jackson concert in Australia in November because the lip syncing was so horrible. 58. If you're behind in your podcast listing, no wonder. In the last year, 11,100,000 new podcast episodes were released. Item 59. Drake is deeply into conspicuous consumption and bling. In November, he took delivery of a Rolls Royce SUV called the Bushicon. He was the very first person in the world to take delivery of one of these things. And the price? Just under one million dollars. Yeah, take that off-road. And finally, the 60th of 60 mind-blowing music facts in 60 minutes is this. Now that we're at the end of a decade, it's time to look back on some accomplishments. And here's a big one. The biggest rock album of the 2010s. And you can choose whatever metric you want from sales to streams to whatever. The biggest rock album of the 2010s was Blurry Face from 21 Pilots. It stayed on the charts for 234 weeks. It was number one for nine weeks. And all songs from the album have been streamed 3.5 billion times. I wonder if the guys are still so stressed out. Wish we could turn back time to the good old days when the mama sang us to sleep, but now we're stressed out. Wish we could turn back time to the good old days. And that's it for another year of weird, strange, unusual, and fascinating music facts. I will spend the next 12 months collecting more of this sort of stuff, and we will meet back here in a year to review things again. There's more to binge on with the Ongoing History Podcast. They're available wherever you get on-demand audio. That includes Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Get them all. They're all free. And you should really subscribe just to be sure you don't miss anything. I have a website, a ajournalofmusicalthings.com. It's updated all the time with music news, opinion, and recommendations. You should get the free newsletter so you don't miss anything. I can also be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We should connect there. And should you wish to reach me on any matter whatsoever, my email is alan at alancross.ca. Technical Productions by Rob Johnston. Talk to you next time. I'm Alan Cross. You've been listening to the Ongoing History of New Music podcast with Alan Cross. Subscribe to the podcast through iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, and everywhere you find your favorite podcasts.